Hello everyone, I'm Tristan, or Tristakov, whichever you know me as, and uh, I just wanted to share some sketches, a lot of sketches, from the development of my comic, Avania, which you can read at worldofavania.com. The comic's available for print and digital distribution, and you can uh, check it out in the, uh, the description, I'll have links to all of that. But anyway, this is something I've wanted to do for a while, now that the comic's actually published up until um, the current pages. Uh, I can go back and, and look at some of this stuff without it necessarily being spoilery, so I suppose if you want a completely fresh start on reading Avania, then I'd recommend reading it first, uh, and then coming back and seeing this, uh, if you're interested. But this uh, shows a lot of the development stuff, not everything made it exactly as it appears here into the comic, but some stuff uh, I had a strong vision for way before I actually got to drawing it, so uh, you can see some of that here. But anyway, this uh, this over here was one of the earliest drawings from a chapter that, the original chapter one, that uh, got scrapped, and um, some elements of it did make it in. Uh, you'll see in the sixth chapter uh, some of that. This originally started with Von Stracht starting the mission, but that, that got moved to later and you had a direct introduction to the, the characters. And these were just some ideas back when I thought, naively, I could launch the comic in 2016. It actually came out in 2018. Some different uh, kind of travel advertisements to show off the comic, but that didn't end up getting used. Over here, we have an overview of Frontier HQ which has stayed pretty much consistent since then. This was probably drawn a little bit later, just as a reference for uh, scenes around the fort. You can see the main fort in the middle, and the ball field, and the muster field. This is the railway line, and the, uh, the runway and airfields out here. And then over here, we've got uh, just some sketches of uh, Hartwin Schmidt, Rick, the guys and an air mask for whatever reason. Just do a lot of these kind of mood character sketches. These are very old at this point, but uh, I still like the way they capture it, even if they're not very refined. And this is just a quick overview of all the details of the uh, ARA garrison blouse, their regular shirt that most of the guys are wearing, just because they have to draw it a lot to keep everything consistent, how the buttons are arranged, how the buttonholes are, the shape of the pockets the way the epaulets button down, where the seams are, a lot of details like that that I draw, so I want to be sure they're consistent <laughs> across pages, across different characters wearing the same uniform. Some more rough sketches, really rough, showing their eyes here. Some Lancer sketches, this is a very old one, this was far before I really even decided on making the comic, I'd already been thinking about the aircraft, so... And uh, some old sketches, early ones of uh, the Black Lanterns. Scarlet, McIntyre, Penrose, Charlotte, Morsley, and Mayfair. And also detailing a little of their uh, facial structure and their eye shape. Their eye shape was something I wanted to be very specific. You could recognize a character just by their eye shape. And it's a little rough here, but I've tried to stick to that and keep it consistent. So. Uh, that's a strong identifying feature. What wasn't so strong was uh, their body shapes. This this sketch didn't do a very good job of that. Um, Morsley's definitely a bit chunkier, and Charlotte and Noon have similar builds, but uh, Charlotte is uh, a little less defined in her musculature, and Mayfair is both shorter and more petite. Yeah, this this sketch didn't do a very good job of that. You'll try to see more of that um, in the actual comic. But the head shapes were pretty well defined early on, and the eye shape, like I said. And I still like these sketches, even though, again, they're they're pretty rough. And this uh, Mayfair here, and also the individual playing card suits that are on the helmets of uh, the four main girls. Just sort of as a fun motif thing, I thought it fit with their uh, mercenary status, and just something creative that they'd... Uh, do themselves to set their uh, equipment apart. And this is an early sketch of Morsley over here. And then I have a number of these over the years. Uh, these are all different uh, little like thumbnails of different sizes. This is of uh, chapter 3 where the Black Lanterns are introduced. You might recognize that shot. 
are some of these shots. A lot of them I kept close to uh, at least the, the main shots, even if the organization of the page and the overall layout changed. And the same thing. More uh, shots from uh, chapter three. And this, this one, I this I think I had the idea before I even started doing the chapter. This was basically the, the same scene when they arrived back in, in Freeport. It's just a little edgier. <laughs> and this is meant to go. Uh, it's like one wide panoramic, like the shot you see in the actual comic. Some more sketches of gear, Mayfair's braid, uh, some ideas for Freeport Station. Freeport didn't end up looking like that. This goes into Chapter 2, showing some of the thumbnails of uh, that chapter's pages. And these I draw pretty small, because uh, I usually play around with them a lot, but sometimes I have a strong idea of what I want. Uh, panels to look like, especially if it has a big focal point in there. And then also just figuring out, usually I'm going by the script, what will need to fit in each page as far as the dialogue. And then by the time I actually get to making the page itself, I uh, edit down a lot, because usually there's a little more dialogue than needs to be there. And then sometimes uh, I'll just have ideas for shots or a scene, and then I'll, I'll draw bits of that. And this one I actually stored up. The panel art ended up reflecting these, but they're just rough sketches getting ideas out. And a lot of these are way before the fact. I'll just have the idea and I'll write it down ahead of time and then come back to it later when it comes time to actually make the page layout and illustrate the page. And this was more for just uh, what their outfits would be for that chapter. Because even though they have... Blacklanders don't have as uniform uniforms, but they still... Uh, change their clothes a little bit, or well, Una didn't end up having her um, jumpsuit on for, for work in this chapter, but Morsley and Mayfair did, and you'll see them in that the pinup that's like this, and a little bit in the actual comic itself, so. This one, this was fun, this was like a real study, rough sketch, but still a study of what the cabin in um, Charlotte and Una's Lancer would look like all the details in there. They have a bunch of laundry and crap hanging up. Um, this ended up not having a stair staircase to access the rear turret. It has a little like passage from the cockpit, but then has a ladder going down to the cabin. And this was just another little study of different hair positions and uh, all of their views and profile. And then also the layout of the Lancers as they're parked in the hair. A little rough sketch study of Bart and Donovan, who are two of the kind of background Black Lantern pilots, Bart pilot and navigator, and then some shots, mostly like a study, but some kind of thumbnails for the, uh, the shots in the hangar. Studies of Bill. He ended up having more or less that look, but with his, his shirt not tucked in and uh, open to. And then just some uh, concepts for scenes that did end up getting into the comic, maybe not looking exactly quite like that, but just the having breakfast situation. And then just some more uh, thumbnailing and a whole bunch of studies for the market scene. That one's like a big thumbnail, but... Uh, ideas for the ads that appear on front of Harka's stand and uh, some of the crap that Charlotte bought there and uh, just more media that would appear in that scene. And one of the early illustrations of uh, the Offspring characters, even though these guys are nameless goons, uh, I still wanted them to be consistent obviously since there's only a small handful of them with the inspector. And this was an or early, early, early version of, of Victoria. She is based off of uh, a Shrike originally, and because everybody else in the comic is pretty much like a bird of prey, or inspired by that, then I decided to make them uh, Osprey-inspired. But this was her original form. It's a little more Sky Captain-y. She doesn't have the longer hair yet, or longer feather style. Another very early sketch of uh, the Osprins. This was the uh, security guard at Freeport. 
Freeport has private security since it's a autonomous station. So they have their own uniforms and equipment. And just some more thumbnails from that chapter. Same thing, more thumbnails of the Osprey's uh, getting into the hangar. Una punching the guy. And a very, very out of scale illustration of uh, Victoria and the inspector. All the really old Victoria sketches, her um, head feathers go in front of her ear rather than being tucked behind it. But he should be a lot shorter. He's about her height. He's not a real tall character. And then uh, some more thumbnails of the um, end of that chapter. And now moving into the next chapter on the frontier. Just uh, some thumbnails here. Nothing too fancy, just figuring out the page layouts. And same, more of those figuring out what I want to do on the pages. And Han's looking kind of disgruntled. But then these are some very old pictures. Like I was saying, I'll draw stuff way ahead of time. So this was uh, really rudimentary sketches of Hans and Beckernerge's conversation, and then Hans and Schmidt's conversation. And then some ones of uh, Rick fighting, and then also a random Eric Claire up here. Which I still like that pose, but this was mainly exploring what I wanted that scene to look like before I think I even wrote it. And then some studies of uh, Max, what I wanted him to look like. He's meant to be more of a generic looking guy because he's mostly a side character but uh wanted him to still be recognizable enough uh since he does have a decent amount of interaction with rick and just a quick one of, of heart one actually behaving like an nco another old one uh this was originally an idea for a, a next issue illustration but i didn't end up doing that because i'm taking so long to make these it's kind of pointless to do a next issue and things will end up changing by the time I get to that issue anyway, so it stayed as a funny illustration. I did a more finished one of this, but never ended up uh, using it for anything, but I still like the idea. So that scene, oh, that scene actually did make it into uh, the uh, the comic itself uh, as a regular comic page. Anyway, and then some thumbnails of Fallon Varius and Eisern at the end of that book, and then uh, a layout, which this is pretty much what I ended up going with for the um, back cover of issue number two, and then showing the inside front, and then uh, the pinup for issue number three, which I ended up really, I think, doing a good job on. That was one of my favorite, and still, I think, one of my nicest looking illustrations, just in terms of line and how I captured the, the characters, so. And then more thumbnails for Issue number three, looking at Freeport, you can recognize some of the scenes here. This this one took a little bit more exploration. Originally there was going to be like a little uh, uh, inset with all the characters reporting in, Star Fox style, or Star Wars style, depending on what reference you want to make, but nothing in particular, I, and it was too much, so I ended up just having them uh, have dialogue as they uh, respond for the radio check. This was an early illustration. I mean, I ended up using this first half for the uh, the actual page, and this ended up being the credits page, but this was a sketch I did a long time in advance of actually writing the issue, or drawing the issue anyway, because I had the idea and didn't want to forget it. And same, more really rough thumbnails. This was a study of... Uh, Freeport showing the different decks and an overview of one of the big market uh, corridors on either side or kind of surrounding the uh, the upper level and then some more ideas this is showing the overall layout of Freeport originally I had an idea to have a concourse kind of elevated down the center but it ended up just being catwalks along the edges and then all open in the center but same progression they kind of walk down uh, on the way to get to the battle area And some more of that, uh, just showing the, the Bowsprit Cafe, which uh, still has outside seating, but didn't end up having like a little wall around it. Just ended up being more open. And originally, Victoria was going to be sitting up on top of it, but it ended up being high up enough that it was uh, not really practical. She'd be too small up there to see from a ground level shot, so she ended up sitting out in front.
And then, of course, detailing Victoria's outfit for that quick cameo. Uh, Victoria changes her outfits a lot, so she's always fun to draw again, regardless. And a uh, really rough thumbnail for them getting back to the hangar. And now, since this was Roll's official introduction, these were the sketches I did to bring Roll into the Evania setting, because she's one of my oldest characters originally. Uh, I came up with her based on uh, the Jumiris I had in Dragon Warrior Monsters on the Game Boy Color, which was like, what, I don't know, 2000? That was, uh, that was an old, old game that I played a lot of, and uh, I've had her ever since, but this was when uh, she needs to be adapted to make sense within the, the rules of the setting. And uh, just some other rough sketches. This didn't really end up getting used specifically anywhere, but showing their flight gear and uh, when they're leaving. Scarlet's flight gear, I think I posted that as a, as a regular sketch. But uh, <laughs> the Una's send-off there. There were some different ideas for that. I just mainly ended up using the, the picture rather than the original premise of it. And back to Frontier HQ with more thumbnails. This one, uh, as you can see, the, the overlay with Becker and just recounting what happened in um, Auslandberg. And then just thumbnails, a lot of notes coming up with that. This was stuff I would like do at the office while I had some downtime so that I could continue coming up with ideas even when uh, I was ostensibly doing some other work that wasn't related to it. Any. And uh, got Rick cleaning on a shovel. Basically, uh, one of his poses in uh, that chapter. And then Rick failing to come up with an excuse, which wasn't particularly related to anything, but also always, always relevant, knowing Rick. And some details for the back cover of issue three. Just looking at what the uh, Quillen monk would look like and what the uh, Spuck and Wire for Beer ad would look like. So these are just some of the cover concepts I had for issue number four, uh, trying some different perspectives. As you can see, this is the one I went with. Uh, mostly uh, the positions changed a little bit with the girls on either side looking down, but anyway, that's just coming up with covers. And this was the inside uh, pinup with Schmidt, Rick, and Hartman for uh, issue four. And then the usual uh, thumbnails of all the page layouts and I think this one went pretty much as intended. And then this was a, a bit older illustration, as you can see, because that's the idea for number two. Uh, I guess I just put it here because this were sketches for the scenes of um, Charlotte and Una arriving and Hans meeting them for the first time. So. Despite being issue two, I'm working on stuff that ended up being an issue four here. And just some drawings of the Black Lanterns and their flight gear, since all of them would be moving out at once. And I didn't end up having too many shots of them in the cockpit. But uh, when they were getting out in issue four, you could see them there too. This is a pretty old illustration, actually, of uh, McIntyre and his uh, navigator, Barney, who is technically in the comic, but hasn't been introduced or even had a good close-up. Uh, Scarlet and England get a, get a good close-up a couple of times, so even though England's uh, more of a background character, you can see her. And this is uh, Harry's co-pilot, um, Longmeadow, Erwin Longmeadow, and that's like the only illustration that I really liked, and it's just this rough sketch, probably the first one I did of him, and I felt like that captured the idea of the character, and then I haven't been able to do that again. Uh, I think he looks okay in the comic, but as far as the other sketches I've done with him, it, it just hasn't worked out as well. And just a dramatic one of Scarlet with her uh, flight gear on, but her long coat over her shoulders. And a couple more sketches of Scarlet and England. It's more or less uh, like how her first appearance in the comic, or well, first appearance at Frontier HQ goes in the comic. And just them together. I like these illustrations, but just uh, sort of working on the character and their dynamics together. And here's Roll in the uh, the truck. It's the Black Lantern's cargo aircraft. 
and it's a semi-displacement airship for just uh, doing deliveries and pickups of supplies. And some other uh, schematics for that. Sort of inspired by a uh, sea duck from uh, Tailspin, which itself is, I think, inspired from the uh, the packet, the flying boxcar real plane. And see, this is supposed to be another Erwin sketch, but I, I didn't like how he comes out there. His beak's too big. Uh, Wilder looks pretty decent, though. And then uh, some other older sketches of uh, Hans and Una meeting. And, oh yeah, here are the, uh, the sketches for Chapter 9. And these are some quite old sketches uh, for the ideas of uh, Valen transforming himself and disguising himself as uh, an avian to infiltrate Frontier HQ. That was an idea I had a while ago, so there are some sketches of that. Well, anyway, this was more, you can tell from the paper, this was a very old illustration. I had the idea for the scene. I had a rough idea of what I wanted Valen's uh, bird form to look like, but just him interacting with Rick. And here's just a sketch of Rick, hanging out on the corner, being cool. Yeah, this is another, I spent a while developing this, I guess, Hun, uh, sorry, uh, Valen and Rick's interaction. And, uh, I don't think I used most of this dialogue that I sketched out here, but it sort of developed the uh, dynamic I wanted them to have, even though they're only together for a couple of... Uh, pages. But I liked the, the little illustrations. Again, the, the mood is effective even if the drawing itself is very rough, which I think that's the important part. I'll leave the actual comic page to refine the artwork and try to capture try to capture the uh, mood of the illustration in something more formalized and on model. And same with this Rick coming in and the background chatter of the engineers in the cantina, which I didn't end up uh, putting in literally, but that's the idea of what else is going on in there. And then Rick's uh, blindfolded darts pose, sort of summing up Rick uh, very eloquently here. And then the rough, kind of crappy sketch that was the idea for the back cover pinup. And the back cover itself originally was just going to be a uh, single Hequivarin. Highlander for the ad, but I decided to make it something a little more romantic, and uh, he ended up just having his traditional dirk rather than a broadsword to make it a more civilian cultural thing for the ad rather than their kind of warrior history. And five, issue five, is one that I spent quite a while Trying to figure out what I wanted to do for the cover. The thing, experimenting with different perspectives, and uh, I think sort of this one was what I ended up going with, just to figure out how to show the scene and show stuff in the background too, and not have too much uh, dead space, and a space with uh, not a lot going on. And then more uh, thumbnails for issue five. Let's see, keep going. A uh, little bit of fight choreography here. It's a short scene, but even then I try to block stuff out so I can tell how the fight goes, even if the actual shots are zoomed in. And this was uh, an idea I had for a, a inside cover pinup, sort of like a mind friggy uh, sequence of, of Alan kind of telepathically communicating with Hans, and Hans like being conscious of it, but uh, not sure what was going on. I didn't end up doing it, but I liked the uh, the idea for the picture. And just the sketch of Schmidt that is flipped the other way, but pretty much got used like this in the comic. And uh, some really, really rough sketches just showing the quick fight between Schmidt and Valen. And uh, Hans all dressed up. That turned out to be a pretty good sketch, and that was similar to the one I ended up doing for the pinup inside issue 5. 
with Alan and Hans meeting again, just sort of exploring that. They didn't end up meeting exactly like this, but uh, it was still fun to just draw on them. Just a little action shot of Hans with his, well, with a different knife, and I realized after I drew it that he probably would have the blade pointing the other way, which I think I reversed uh, when I published this sketch by itself, but anyway. Uh, Beckenridge and Valen, and sort of some ideas for the flashback through Beckenridge's point of view. See, this wouldn't have been, this would have been a third person, but it ended up being first person, because you're literally seeing Beckenridge's memories. And the second half of issue five's uh, thumbnails. And closing up on issue five, and then also just a random uh, 80s workout outfit pinup idea. I still want to do that. I like that, and I like uh, 80s aesthetic stuff, so maybe I'll do that sometime for a, a summer pinup. And these are some old drawings, because again, I had this scene idea for quite a while before I got to the chapter, so that's uh, Charlotte and Una in their new quarters, and Una doing an impression of McIntyre, and then the girls in different uh, kind of sleep attire. They don't really have full sets of pajamas, so it's kind of a mix. I guess Smeefer's in the one with literal pajamas, and the yeah, others are just any whatever they have that's comfortable. And probably the oldest, the oldest sketch of that scene, this one's rough, uh, but I ended up doing more or less that, dialogue's a little different, but uh, more or less this scene, another uh, Morsley, just ended up making her t-shirt a little longer, so it's not like, just like uh, Charlotte and Una. And there's some other rough sketches of anime-esque pillow fighting. God, everything is loud outside right now. And some rough sketches of the back cover, which uh, this is what I ended up going with. I think that might be spoilers for later, one of these, for a later pinup. Uh, but this one is what I ended up doing, and it's almost a direct follow-up to the last scene of them. Uh, with Roll and Harry in the hallway while they're having the pillow fight. And this one, number uh, six, issue number six, I had a much different idea this was the original idea, like, looking through a crystal ball, which you'll see the relevance of later when um, the second half of issue six comes out. But uh, I had a very different idea for it, and it just wasn't really working that well. I had a lot of wasted space, and then I had some other ideas that uh, might have been cool, but I didn't end up using them. So I went for the biggest, most dense collage of all the new characters, because there's a lot of new characters introduced in issue six. So I ended up doing that, and I really liked how it came out. And these are the sketches for the pinups for issue six, which I still have to do, and it'll be one of the last things to, uh, to finish up issue six. And then uh, an early sketch of Blanche. Her uniform and appearance isn't quite the same in these uh, insignia or just early prototypes, so it's a bit old, but started to establish the character, and then her actual uniform underneath the jacket is pretty much that now, but still figuring out how to draw her. And this was a more recent one after I think I'd started drawing her in the comic, or at least uh, got her finalized for the comic. And Von Stracht, I think he had a pretty defined look for a long time, but I did a few standalone illustrations of him to uh, iron out the details. Yeah, that was, that was probably the original drawing of it. So yeah, he stayed pretty much the same. I just had to finalize what his insignia looked like. And perhaps slight spoilers for the future, but this is way out, so. Bunch of airships. Hmm. And this was the, uh, the detailed overview of what the bridge, the Admiral's Bridge of the Lord Standish looked like and what the deck layout was. Uh, again, because this was a scene that a lot took place in, and uh, minor spoilers, you'll see it again at some point in the future, so it would need to be consistent, and they had to know uh, what it would look like. So 
I wouldn't have to change things down the line to accommodate uh, something I wanted to do in the story. So you can see in pretty clear detail what, what everybody's position and uh, what the layout of the deck looked like. So that pretty much is how it ended up. And uh, the initial sketch of cast, I guess this is fairly old now, but um, when I decided Reese needed to have a, a roommate or a, a friend in the Navy that um, would be a regular, then uh, I came up with Cass. And an early sketch of Reese, pretty much uh, what she ended up doing in the comic. I like the idea of it, so. I sketched that out, and Jesus, jeez, this page, this is crap. Uh, this is all the White Knights, but drawn really terribly. I don't like any of them. They did not turn out really how I wanted here, except Walter just looks a little bit more evil than he should. Sarah's all right. Felix is all right. Maybe he had a haircut or something. I don't know. None of them look good. I don't like that sketch. However, here they look they look pretty good. Sarah and Felix, they're the junior White Knights members. And uh yeah, the, the jacket design changed a little bit, but otherwise that's pretty much how I think they should be. And this was other early design sketches, which uh again, rough sketch, but that caught the mood. That's that's pretty much Mayfair. Or, <laughs> not Mayfair. Visual aesthetic, cool Mayfair. That's pretty much Sarah. She has a similar hairstyle but trying to make it differentiated in more than just having an additional braid. And now we get into slight spoilers because this is early rough uh, sketches for the second half of issue 6, chapter 13. That's uh, what I'm working on right now. It's almost done. So uh, this was way ahead of time. Just had an idea for what I wanted uh, those scenes to look like. So I won't talk too much about them now, but uh, you can see some other Pretty early design work, some alternate stuff for Valen. He didn't end up having that. Him and Iserin pretty much have the same uniforms. The only difference is their swords. And uh, then over here, uh, just concepts for what I wanted the rank insignia to be for the regular uh, Demonian army uniforms, which pretty much stayed. They, their uniforms are so fancy and they vary more by unit than. Uh, Devanian uniforms that didn't follow too strictly. <laughs> Just uh, another real rough sketch of Valen and Ericlair, their uh, relationship. And a more recent, well, it's pretty old now, I guess, but a more recent character introduction and one that's in Chapter 6 is uh, Ministry Secretary Jane Darcy. She has kind of neat powers, which I don't know if you'll see anytime soon, but uh, I wanted to draw it because it was kind of cool. And the chief minister. Can't say too much there, but you'll see in uh, chapter six. And going past, or not chapter six, issue six, sorry, but going past that, this will be uh, in issue seven. So, again, won't say too much, just uh, some relevant sketches. And this goes even farther past, but uh, that's the White Knights uh, in heavier amounts of flight gear, not just their, their jackets. And uh, the Mark III Lancers, which are a little smaller than the Mark IIs. And so the last thing, just more uh, Lancer Mark III illustrations and some more early sketches uh, that'll be relevant for upcoming chapters. Surprise, surprise. Oh, and the last thing, actually in here, uh, I just have some samples of my stickers. So if you ever wondered about the stickers I have on uh, Ivania PX, which you can get to from worldofivania.com, uh, that's my online store. I've got Eric Lair stickers, 80s Victoria, uh, Happy Reese, and the uh, Ivania logo. Those are all available. And then these ones are either limited or uh, they aren't up there yet. But uh, 
more Victorias. I like making Victoria stickers, apparently. And uh, the Unan Trial at Snowhawk sticker, which I did make a bunch of. I just got some whenever um, Sticker Mule has sales. And then the uh, little Ivania, like, not really a business card, just a publicity thing I can uh, give out. Website address has stayed the same, worldofivania.com. So, anyway, that's... Uh, that's all the sketches covering pretty much everything that's published now and the next chapter and a little bit of the next issue. So you can uh, you can read all this, uh, the actual comic, at worldofavania.com, and you can purchase print issues. I have some right over here, and I have other videos just going through what the issues look like. You can order print issues at uh, Indie Planet. And you can buy digital versions of these on Comixology. I'll put all the links in the description. And uh, I hope you enjoyed just having a little look at uh, some sketches and what it was like to develop the Avenue comic. Thanks. Bye.